Hi, my name is John. Today I'm going to be building a, an actual working pallet chopper. Welcome to another episode. In the previous three parts of this project to make a pellet maker, I've been working on a device that will chop up filament into pellets that I can use in my injection molding machine. I need this because I need to make some custom uh, plastic which has uh, specific colors as well as anti-static additives. I have a filistruder that I'm assembling that will allow me to mix all of that up with a screw and turn it into filament. But I needed a way to turn that into pellets. In the previous episode, here's a uh, video that gives you an idea of what I'm referring to. I had something that was pretty complicated and I wasn't really happy with it. So I did what I've done before, which is I decided to do a pivot or persevere. In this case, it was too complicated and I ran across another approach that turned, looked like it was going to be really simple. So I decided to pivot to that approach. Now, it turned out not to be quite so simple because it turns out that uh, ABS is harder to cut than PLA. And what you'll see at the end is the result of probably, I don't know, five, somewhere between five and ten different iterations on the design. I still have one or two more iterations before it'll be ready for full production, but I'm just about there. So let's head to uh, the bench in the workshop and uh, get started. I'm not sure what this is called, but uh, this is a Woolcroft uh, 3260. 000, 25 millimeters in diameter and as you can see it has these uh, teeth that are just perfect because the idea is that it grabs uh, the filament like so pulls it in and then there's a piece of metal in between like so that will pinch and cut the filament while pulling it in the next piece so what I need to do is put a bearing on here and then I need to remove the screw so that I can put a bearing on this side as well. So I'm going to go ahead and try to remove this screw. I'm going to use the, the V-block part of the vise uh, since I have the vise off my milling machine table at the moment to see if I can uh, pinch this in here and get a really good grip on the, the shaft. So I'm going to crank it down here and then try to use this big screwdriver and see if I can get it loosened. Well, okay, I think I need it a little tighter. Because it started rotating. Okay. Uh, that's really tight. I might have to put some paper or something else in there to give it a little bit more friction. Or I might have to get a, a wrench and hammer in here to uh, give it a little bit of a blow to get it started. Oh, that did it. Okay, so now it's loose and I can take a look at the screw to see what type of screw it is. And I'm going to want to get a longer one so that I can put a bearing in there. Here's what I need to start assembly. I've got a piece of steel which is uh, 1 8 inch thick. I'm going to cut out a small piece of this on the bandsaw and then I'll design this into the 3D printed part that holds everything together. I found a longer M8 screw. You can see it's quite a bit longer, but uh, it's not the perfect length as you can see here. Fortunately, I just need four M5 washers, and then as you'll see, That's just about the right length. Uh, maybe one more washer, but I'll try it without an extra washer and see how it is. Oh, actually, it is five washers. I have one washer still in there, as you can see. So now it's the correct length, and that means I can screw this back in here. And this will give a bearing on this side so that it rolls really freely. And then this bearing will go on this side and it's uh, kind of a tight fit, so I think I'm going to have to uh, push it down uh, with an arbor press or 
something like that to get it uh, the right distance. I didn't take video of trying it out, but what happened is the drill couldn't really hold on to the shaft. It seemed to be freewheeling quite a bit, and as you can see here, it's uh, rubbed off all the black. What this tells me is that the, the drill is not really getting a good grip on this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mill uh, three flats so that it'll be something like a hexagon, just three parts of the hexagon that will fit into the uh, drill bit and be held in place better. So I'm going to just uh, put it here in the vise. There's a little V uh, on the side of the vise. And then I'll just um, see if I can mill the uh, sections flat. Uh, when I get to a certain point, it kind of, and then hold it right there, it's held into position. And then what I want to do, so I'll try to get this around here, is bring the protractor over, and then sight along that and compare the angle. And uh, I can see that I need to rotate it slightly. And doing it that way allows me to rotate this uh, 60 degrees at a time and mill the hex shape on this. And it's pretty accurate, certainly more than accurate enough. Here's the finished uh, milling job. And as you can see, it uh, is certainly close enough to be in the hex uh, now. And so it should stay in the drill chuck without slipping. I reassembled this, uh, the, uh, the cutter as well as the, the two bearings. And now I'm going to install it in here. Now one thing I did is I increased the width of this slot here for the metal so that it can slide back and forth. And the reason I increased that is so that I can adjust it. I have three uh, adjusting screws and right now I have them flush. So I'll go ahead and put the, the metal in there, and then I can put this in there, and then this goes over the top like so, and is held in place with four screws. Now this doesn't have to be completely tight, in fact it isn't right now, and it'll still work fine. So the plastic goes in here through this hole. Uh, these holes are shaped this way to make it easier to 3D print, and I'll explain that separately. And then they come out here. So let's head over to the workbench and see how this works. Okay, so I'll run the first piece through and see what happens. This is with the, uh, the largest gap. Okay, and so you can see it... Uh, uh, it didn't cut all the way through. I have the, the plate tightened to the uh, tightest position and I'm going to show you what happens. I have a, you know, a piece of uh, filament and you can see it, it feeds in for a little while and then it stops feeding in. Sometimes it gets stuck. I'll do that again. So I can certainly make this work and the pellets that it produces are just fine in terms of size. There's some variation, but it'll work fine for my machine. The real issue is that it doesn't keep feeding in, so I'm going to try changing the design to see if I can uh, add a feeder to this and see if that makes a difference. I've had this together a few times, but I wanted to show you how it all goes together. So I have, as you can see, a number of uh, 3D printed parts that make up the assembly. There's this block here and the this block has some bearings that go in the bottom. These are a push foot. They're a little tighter than I probably would make them the next time but it is possible to get them out. Then I have the piece of steel. This is a uh, eighth inch thick piece of steel that just goes into here. Assuming I can get it in straight, that is. Uh, 
Okay, <clears throat> so the idea of this is uh, the, the gear will pinch the filament against this. Also there's a hop gear here that will uh, squish the filament against that. So speaking of the hop gear, you know, this is the hop gear right here. As you can see it has uh, some knurls around it and then it has a set screw. So what I did is I created a flat on here and that allows me to make sure that this doesn't rotate. I'm going to be driving this with uh, another gear which will use a flat that's here as well. So this goes in here and I'm going to this is backwards Okay, so the hop gear goes in through here and then I can see it through this opening there. So what I'm going to do is uh, put on a couple of M5 screws to this M5 threaded rod. And what I want to do is get the screws so that the hop gear is centered in the opening right there. And so I have that centered in the opening nut right now. So I'll take another M5 nut and I'll use this as a, a jam nut to make sure it doesn't come unscrewed. Okay, so I'll reach in here with a couple pliers and just tighten it up. There we go. Next thing is I can put uh, this in here and then I can put the top on. Okay, which is held in place by some M4 screws. And I, I have four holes, but I don't think I really need all four holes, so I'm just going to put two of them in. Okay, I have uh, this gear. This gear has a hexa uh, hole here, a round hole here, and then I have a, an M3 nut there that's captured along with a screw. And this, uh, there's a little depression here that allows me to get that in there. Now the reason it's so short and I need the depression is because I'm still going to drive this uh, using this, the three jaws from the, the drill. So I'll put this on there, and then I can tighten the screw here. So now this is uh, held in place firmly, and when the, the sh it won't spin on the shaft. So this is going to drive an idler gear here, and then it'll drive the hop gear through the shaft. Okay, next I need to get... Uh, so one of the tricks here is, is I have some flats here. There we go. So I want to make sure that um, I have this tightened against the flats. And that will ensure that it rotates, it doesn't rotate on the shaft, it rotates the shaft. So I'm going to spin this back and forth a little bit. Yep, I can feel that it's on the flat. Okay, so now that this will spin the, the hopped gear. Okay, and then I have uh, the idler shaft. This goes through the back here, and then this just fits down, like so, and I'll make sure that uh, there's a little bit of a gap there on the bottom. This is snug against the bottom, and now I can tighten this screw. At this point, these can wiggle back and forth a little bit, but when I put the lid on, uh, that will take care of that looseness. So this uh, retainer, I guess is a better word, has a slot right here, so it's a press fit. Um, I have screw holes here, but uh, I forgot to add the screw holes to this part, so I have to print a new version of it. But it's not really needed, as you'll see in a second. So 
Again, some more bearings, like so. And then these gears will be held in place by these nuts. I'll probably replace uh, these with nylocks at some point, but using regular nuts makes it easier for me to take this, take this apart and put it back together, which I've done quite a few times. Okay, so now I've got uh, it almost assembled. I need to put the jam nut on there, and then we'll tighten the jam nut. So you can see, when we spin the main shaft, uh, it's going to move the cutter, which will cut the filament, and at the same time, it's driving the hobbed gear, which you, you may or may not be able to see through there. And I have this uh, at about a 3 to 1 ratio, I believe it is, so that um, the filament movement here will match the filament movement as it's being cut by this. So. Let's head to the workshop and uh, see how this works. I have a much bigger piece of filament than I've been able to put through here uh, so far. So I'll connect the drill. Okay, it's turning the correct direction. And so what I'll do is I'll feed the filament in through here and we'll see what happens. Okay, I'd say that's success. You can see that uh, we have a nice pile of filament there and it's all nicely chopped up into uh, small pieces that are just the right size for my injection molding machine. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will have one more part in this series which will be assembling the fill extruder making custom plastic using master batch from raw ABS pellets, turning them into pellets, and I might even do some injection molding with the pellets that I create. I hope you liked this episode, as I said. Uh, if you do, please give me a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe. If you'd like to be notified of when I have new episodes, click on the bell that's next to the subscribe button. See you next time.